Here in Washington recently, an unusual sight. One million replicas of human bones were laid out on the National Mall in front of the U.S. Capitol. The display was huge, and it marked an international effort to call attention to genocide worldwide. The One Million Bones Project has been called a visual petition against atrocities. VOS Julie Tabo was at the event and talked about its symbolism with Rebecca Ward. Before warned, this segment contains some disturbing images. They started with just one bone, and it was laid down by John Dow, who was a survivor of genocide himself. He was one of the lost boys of Sudan. And he laid that symbolic first bone, and there was just this palpable silence. And we had a cello uh, playing in the background, a cellist who had this very haunting tune. And so it sort of really focuses your attention of what that one symbolic bone means. And then within a span of four hours, one million, one by one, volunteers dressed in white who would start at the edges um, of the National Mall and each carrying one to, at times, piles of these bones and laying them down on the mall. And as it started to unfold and you saw these bones kind of multiply, it, you can't help but as a human being be aware of what that symbolizes. The bones are beautiful. The event was the brainchild of Naomi Natali, founder of the nonprofit organization One Million Bones. Its mission is to use art and activism to focus attention on genocide. It's really inspiring and, and humbling to see, um, to see everybody come together. You know, we're all dressed in white and we're laying down bones and with the same intention of raising awareness about these atrocities that go on in Sudan and South Sudan and Congo, Burma and Somalia. And, um, it's powerful. A lot of people, when you say genocide, a lot of people think Holocaust, they think Rwanda genocide, but many people aren't aware, and what Naomi mentioned was how many people are not aware in America. We kind of have this feeling that genocide is going on, but it's so far away, but it is going on in Sudan, in South Sudan, um, it's going on in the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Burma, and so her feeling was this is a visual petition to raise awareness about genocide that's currently going on in the world and have people become aware and become active and also for the U.S. government to take more action and recognize and do more foreign policy in terms of addressing this very serious issue. I believe that everyone who, who came here we take the message to their community so that uh, people can be helped in Congo and other countries. The bone laying ceremony was part of a three day event. The bones were crafted out of paper, clay, and plaster by students, artists, and activists all around the world over three years. Many of the volunteers who made these bones um, at first <clears throat> were a little bit wary. Well, I'm not artistic, and they quickly understood it wasn't about that. It was about putting something tangible in your hand and the feelings that that evoked. There's a beautiful quote from Carl Wilkins um, who spoke at one of our events that when you make something with your hands, it changes the way you feel, which changes the way you think, which changes the way you act. And that really is a philosophy that this project is based in. Other than just you know, keeping the issue of genocide alive, what does the exhibit or what does the artist hope to accomplish by um, putting such a massive exhibit together? Well, this was a three-year project, three years in the making, uh, 125,000 participants all over the world, 30 countries, all of the United States, and now that it's gotten attention, she hopes that this will end up in a permanent display so that people can honor genocide victims and um, bring together the community to address genocide that's ongoing. The One Million Bones event in Washington was the third such bones-laying event in the United States. You can find out more on the project website, onemillionbones.org.